in the space race, not only the big names, US, China, and Russia, but Japan is a powerful competitor. Japan has a long history of launching orbital rockets, dating back about half a century. During much of this time, its launch industry has focused largely on orbiting national payloads, such as communications, global positioning, and Earth observation satellites for sovereign purposes. However, with the H-2, a rocket introduced in 2001, the country's launch industry sought to tap into the commercial launch market and send satellites into space for other countries and private companies. With this medium lift rocket, which is about on par in lift capacity with SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster, Japan had some commercial successes, including a notable launch of the Emirates Mars mission in 2020. But the 8 do you a uh, rocket which is manufactured by the japanese conglomerate mitsubishi heavy industries has never really broken through one reason is cost at a launch price of approximately 90 dollars million the hot wah rocket is about 50 percent more expensive than spacex's falcon 9 rocket as a result japan's h2 booster only launches a handful of times per year primarily serving the japanese government this problem was already clear nearly a decade ago, so the Japanese space agency JAXA greenlit the development of the next-generation H-3 rocket. As it developed the new vehicle, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries focused on cost. The goal was to sell the H-3 at $51 million per launch in its base configuration. With a lower price, Japan envisioned doubling its launch cadence from about four to eight missions a year. And at this point, 3 has passed a long way and completely able to become rival to SpaceX Falcon 9 and even humiliated Blue Origin. Explain everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The ET-3 project, a collaboration between Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and JAXA, was approved in 2013, with work beginning the following year. The H-3 launch vehicle was designed with three primary objectives in mind, high flexibility, high reliability, and high cost performance, according to JAXA. But would that be enough? SpaceX Blue Origin and others are investing in reusable rockets to bring the cost of spaceflight down. Would an expendable rocket like the C-3 be enough? Talk about SpaceX first. Miss Chief Executive Miyanaga. San said Mitsubishi has broad interests in the aerospace sector, from commercial jets to satellite components to technology for mitigating orbital debris. Eventually, however, he did acknowledge that SpaceX is, of course, the competition. We are very much confident to compete against them. Was the uh, three enough for such a competition? No, he replied. The <laughs> three and the successor. Our three has already reached some maturity. So far, relatively few commercial customers have signed on to the new Japanese rocket aside from satellite operator in Marsat. This is partly due to delays in development and uncertainty over when the He 3 rocket would actually take flight. But another problem is that there are no clear advantages for this rocket over the Falcon 9, which has a very high reliability rating with 170 consecutive successful launches since 2016. Moreover, it is not clear what price Mitsubishi is really selling the Ha 3 rocket for, nor whether it can yet match the schedule reliability of the Falcon 9 which launches once a week or more. There is yet another, more fundamental issue. When Japanese engineers first began designing the A3 rocket in 2013, they were not concerned about reusability. SpaceX would not land the Falcon 9 rocket for two more years and would not relaunch a first stage until 2017. However, as the development of the Act 3 has dragged out into the 2020s, it has become clear that rockets without some form of reusability strategy will face significant challenges as they compete for commercial launch contracts in the coming years. This is not to say the Act 3 rocket will be obsolete as it rolls to the launch site. However, so much has changed in the world of launch over the last decade that it probably will be one of the world's last major development projects for a fully expendable launch vehicle but it is clear that what 3 Rocket has done at present is better than Blue Origin New Glenn. The biggest difference is that the 8-3 Rocket is on real not only in simulation, it passed all the important tests and ready for flight. Only one problem, 3 Rocket fails to launch on first attempt this week. Space, as the saying goes, is hard, so they can be success for the next time. 
During the live-streamed event, the H3's main engine cut off after the launch countdown had reached zero, leaving the 57-meter 187th rocket on its launch pad at the Tanegashima spaceport along with its payload. The Alos? Three land observation satellite, which is also equipped with an infrared sensor. Designed to detect North Korean ballistic missiles, JAXA said it is investigating the cause of the apparent failure. The rocket was supposed to fly in 2020, but serious technical problems with the new Li 9 first stage engine forced a postponement. The problems, first detected during qualifications testing in May 2020, included cracked turbine blades in the Li 9's turbo pump assembly and a hole seared into its combustion chamber wall. As a result, JAXA bumped the launch from 2020 to spring 2021, but ongoing problems forced yet another delay, this time to early 2023. The plan is to launch six H3 missions each year for the next 20 years, with a target launch price starting at around $38 million, 5 billion yen. This should prove attractive to both public and private customers, including those hoping to join in on rideshare missions. Excitingly, JAXA is hoping to leverage the rocket as a means for delivering cargo to the moon, including components that will eventually make up the planned Lunar Gateway space station. The rocket is also highly modular, featuring four different flight configurations and more planned. Three is a two-stage fully liquid propellant launch vehicle with a design partly inspired by its predecessors H, E, E, A, A, and H, I, E, B, and also Japan's Epsilon rocket. The first stage will feature either two or three Li-9 engines, while the upper stage gets a singly engine. The rocket strap on solid rocket boosters are very similar to the Epsilon first stage. The first and second stage look. Nine engines feature the world's first expander bleed cycle engine. In this system, turbine pressure can be high because the heated propellant that drives the turbine can be dumped. Bleeding the turbine in this manner produces higher engine thrust but at the expense of efficiency. And as JAXA points out, expander bleed cycles can realize both intrinsic safety of simplicity and low cost. The fully integrated standard configuration stands nearly 207 feet 63 meters tall and with a core stage diameter of 17 feet 5.2 meters. Three should be capable of lifting 8,818 pounds 4,000 kg to sun-synchronous orbit and between 8,818 and 17,417 pounds 4,000 and 7,900 kg to geostationary transfer orbit, according to Parvaparsi or pairing to Parabolica. Future upgrades could make it possible for the rocket to deliver cargo to the moon, including the planned Gateway space station in lunar orbit. The rocket can launch with one of two types of fairings, and with a choice of either zero, two, or four solid rocket boosters. Four H3 designations exist depending on the configuration, which meets JAX's desire for a flexible launch system. Ground teams assemble the rocket atop the movable launcher, which itself rests in JAX's vehicle assembly building until it's time to roll out for fueling and launch. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.